Hello, Chris. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Doing very well, thank you. And Mickey? Oh, hello. The Pageant Report Fair is back. Nice to see you, Peter. Lovely to see you too. It feels like such a long time ago. We were in the studios at Microsoft Redmond, I think all the way back in February, where we were recording the uh, paginated reports in a day course. Feels like a long time. Yeah, it's been a, been very successful. Over 180,000 views so far. Uh, been great content for people to consume. A lot of great feedback on it. Really excited to update it today with some great stuff the team's been working on over the last nine or ten months. Fantastic. Well, um, let's get to it then. We've got a, a whole suite of new updates that have come since our February recording. So let's take a look at what's new. Sounds good. Alrighty. So there are five topics that we'd like to share with you, uh, including subreports, page view, Power BI export API. Power Automate Actions for Exporting Reports, and the new Power BI Premium per User. Let's talk first about subreports. Yeah, I'm really excited to go over all of these topics. Subreports was a big one we worked on, it <laughs> seems like a while ago at this point, but very excited to go about that. And then, yeah, Premium per User is a great way to tie things up. Awesome. Well, a closer look then at subreports. All right, so you can use a subreport to embed another report into your paginated report design. So conceptually, it's similar to a frame in a web page if you're exporting this to HTML. Any paginated report can be embedded, providing it's stored in the same workspace as the parent report. Um, and it's also of interest to note if you're migrating reports that were uh, developed for SQL Server reporting services and you use the migration tool, there's an auto wire up of subreports during the migration. Yeah, this is a big one that we made sure it was in place. Uh, with the migration tool that's available on GitHub because we understand how challenging that could potentially be as people move hundreds or thousands of these reports from their folders to the workspaces in Power BI. Peter, why don't you show us a demo? So let me begin this demo by showing you in my pre-ad workspace that I have the salesperson yearly sales report. I click it, the report loads, And I then select in the salesperson report parameter, one of the salespeople, let me choose Michael Blythe, and then we'll view the report. All right, fairly straightforward report here. Uh, note the report title, and beneath it, we see the parameter filter values reflected in the subtitle. And then it's just a standard column chart showing monthly sales. Gee, Peter, could we make this report a little bit more exciting? Well, Chris, I think you're onto something. So let's take a look inside the same workspace. I have the salesperson directory report. You might be familiar with this report because we developed it during the paginated in a reports day course. Okay, so this report accepts a single report parameter. You can either have all salespeople or select an individual salesperson. Let's take a look at the report for Michael Blythe again. Now, wouldn't it be great if we could embed this detailed profile of Michael Blythe into the yearly sales report. Well, actually, Peter, that'd be great. Let me now show you how I can do that using a subreport. So I open up Power BI Report Builder, and then we'll file open from the Power BI service, selecting my workspace, and I open up the salesperson yearly sales report. So what I'll first do is select the chart, and then we'll open up the properties pane, and then I'm gonna move it down so that the top of that chart now sits at two inches. And that leaves me perfect space then to insert a subreport. Now, I can do that here on the insert ribbon, or well, my preferred approach is simply to right click on the report canvas, and then I'm going to insert a subreport from here. Let me position it at the very top left, and to fill the entire width of the page. To configure the subreport, I right click, open the subreport properties, and then I'm going to click the browse button and then select that salesperson directory report that is already published and it lives inside the Power BI workspace. Now this report has a single parameter. And so what I need to do here on the parameters page is add in and create a connection that the employee key parameter will be assigned. Now I could choose from the drop down list, but I'm going to build up an expression because the expression will allow me to pass the value of the employee key parameter. 
what I'll do is just tidy up that subtitle text box expression because we no longer need to pass out the label of the report parameter because this subreport will self-describe the selected salesperson. All right, on the Home Ribbon tab, let's preview the report. I'm challenged for credentials, so let me enter the read-only user. And because there's also the sub-report, I need to enter the credentials for it. And now I select the single employee of Michael Blythe and view the report. And now here you can see the embedded sub-report with the chart beneath it. Now let me just switch the print layout on so we can see what this would look like when rendered to a full page. And there we see the embedding of a sub-report into this single page report. Hold on a minute. We couldn't make this report any more interesting. Like, couldn't you design the report to deliver maybe a page for each salesperson? That's a great idea, Chris. Well, let's see how I can adapt this report design by embedding a sub-report within a data region to generate that multi-page requirement. Okay, so let me switch back to design view. And the first thing I'm going to do then is come to the data set for DS main. Let's take a look at its properties and specifically the query. To make this a little easier, let me copy and paste that into Management Studio because there's a change that I need to make here. We can presently see that the where clause has a filter on a single employee key. Well, what I'm gonna do is take the employee key and I'm going to introduce it into the select and I'm going to group by it and I'm going to remove it from the WHERE clause. So if I was to test this, for example, for year 2018, this is the result that would come back. A grouping by employee key, month, and then sales. All right, I'm now going to copy that query, return to Report Builder, and then update the query of my main data set. Okay, at this point, then I can also remove the parameter for employee key. and the data set for employee key as well. That was to populate the drop-down list of available values. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll move that sub-report down and that's gonna give me some space here at the top of the report body to go ahead and insert a table, which I'm gonna position at the very top left corner of the body. Next, I edit the properties of that table and I'm going to bind it to the DS main data set. Next, I won't be requiring a header for this table, so I right click and delete the header row, and I won't be requiring the second and third columns, so let me delete those also. And then what I'll do is I'll widen this table to be the full width, so let's just check that is a size of seven and a half inches, and then I'm going to insert another row inside the current grouping. So now I have two rows for the detail group. Next, let me configure that row group. So I come down to the group properties here and I'm going to add in that it needs to group by the employee key field. And while I'm here, I'll go to the page breaks page and I'm going to ensure that between each grouping that it will do so on a new page. And now it's just a matter of dropping and dragging my sub-report into that first row and the chart into the second. Now when I select the sub-report, let me come to the properties pane and I'm just going to increase the height to two inches. In the second row, I'll select the chart and I'll increase its height to six inches. making sure there's no empty or blank space beneath. The last thing that I need to configure then is that the sub-report properties now need to change. Remember that before they were binding to a parameter value, which we don't have anymore. So I'm simply going to use the drop-down list and have it bind to the employee key field of the DS main data set that the table is based on. All right, well, let's run the report and see how it looks. All right then, so here is a 14-page report. 
Let's navigate between the pages to see the different salespeople, with each page having the salesperson details embedded with the chart below. All right, let me go ahead and publish this to the Power BI service and overwrite the older version of the report. So now I can return here to the Power BI service and then load the report to see my salesperson yearly sales with embedded sub-report. So page view is a big one. Uh, and, you know, interestingly enough, this is something that I pointed out to you, Peter, when we did our, we did our first presentation back in February in the studio when, hey, why don't you preview this in Power BI Report Builder using uh, the, this layout? And you're like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't even realize that was there. Well, we took that concept and brought it into the service because many, many people use this capability to export the report or print it out. And now you can see this in the service exactly as it would be printed um, once you're looking at your document, uh, whether in a file format of a PDF or a Word document. This is a great way to see this uh, in the browser and have that same experience. So it's available now in the service. Uh, you actually can even access it using a URL parameter. So as it's called out in here, um, you can set the specific page settings. Obviously, it'll inherit what do you have in your RDL file uh, set by the author. But this is a, uh, assuming you're using uh, the new Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome, you can. Uh, this is absolutely supported and something that you can use to view your report as it would look, uh, basically like a Word document. Oh, hey, Peter. Uh, I'm still here watching this. This is really great content. Do you think we could see a demo of this quickly? Well, let me see what I can do. Okay, notice on the menu we have a view drop-down, and it's here that I can open up the page settings. I might choose to take a look at this report using letter page size in portrait, and then I can return to the view menu and I can turn on page view. Here's my 14 page report as it would be rendered with PDF. And I can easily navigate between the pages. All right, well now let's talk about Power BI Export API. Developers can use the Power BI REST API to programmatically generate a file of a paginated report for the supported formats of CSV, Word, Image, and many others. Parameter values can be passed, and row-level security is supported when Power BI datasets are the source for your report. Yeah, and a great way to leverage that Power BI Export API, Peter, is using the new Power Automate integration that we've introduced uh, in the last few months. You know, for folks who aren't familiar with or don't feel comfortable using the API directly, uh, this puts it in a very easy to use wrapper. We've actually taken the time to put out several templates right out of the box that you can go and use as part of Power Automate that get you up and running. You'll see my demonstration. I go from start to finish in under four minutes. So no codes required. Uh, another nice thing is because this is part of the Power BI standard connector, uh, there's no additional cost beyond your Office 365 license if you have Office 365. Uh, so this is a great way to get started, and I put together a small demonstration for you that I'd love for you to take a look at now. Awesome. I'm going to show you just how easy it is to integrate Power Automate into your Power BI pagination report use cases uh, moving forward with both premium and premium per user. So here I am looking at Power Automate for my Microsoft 365 tenant. Uh, so I'd like to set up a pagination report subscription that goes directly to a OneDrive folder versus something that comes via email. To do this, it's very simple. I can simply use one of the Power BI Pagination Report templates that is available now in Power Automate. So if I go to New and then Create from Template, I'll see the ability to search for a number of templates. So I'm going to type in Paginated and hit Enter. And you'll see now I have five pre-made templates that make it super simple for me to go and actually save a Power BI Pagination Report to OneDrive for Business folder on a scheduled basis. So I'm going to click on this template and you'll see uh, I'm going to do this on a recurring basis and I need to have connectivity to both Power BI and OneDrive for Business. This has already been set up with my tenant. If I hit continue, 
you'll see I now have the ability to set an interval and uh, based on a certain frequency. And so here, I would actually want to do this once a week. And under the advanced options, I can set a time zone. So I'm going to put here a uh, Pacific time zone. And I can leave this blank if I so choose. But if I do uh, 2020, well, you know what? I'm going to leave that blank because I'll just start on the next day. And I'm going to do this every Friday at, uh, I'm going to do this at 8, 15 every morning. And again, this will run on a 24-hour time basis here, as you can see. So now I just need to choose my workspace. And I'm going to choose Premium Per User. And I'm not going to choose the name of the report, good old Mickey. And I want this to come out into PDF, although I have all of these other options if I so choose. Now, a number of these items I don't actually need to use for this. I don't need to use RLS, because it's not using a Power BI data source as the data set. And I also don't need to use any sort of OAuth token for SQL Azure. I also don't have any special uh, format settings that I want to enter. And the report parameter, I'm going to go with the default, which is Mickey. And now I just need to select a polar path that I want this to be saved in. So I choose my folder, and very easily, I can choose my documents folder. And it's actually going to save it as paginating report underscore and then the time. And if I want to change that, and I'll just change it to Mickey. And it'll save the file content. And that's it. I hit save. It's saving my flow. And now I have this saved to be run, and it's running right now. So that's how simple it is for you to go and set up a paging report use case using Power Automate for your Power BI tenant. You know, as much as I enjoyed the Power Automate integration work we did, I think the most exciting thing uh, to announce as part of this update is the new Power BI Premium Pre User license option for paging reports and all the other premium features. Uh, this was something that we just announced last month, and as of, you know, at the time we're recording, this is now available in all public regions across the globe for you to try at no cost in your tenant all of the premium features, and especially, of course, my favorite, paginated reports. And this is something where uh, the biggest piece of feedback, and you saw us talk about it in the video several months ago, was the cost of entry to start using paginated reports. Well, now any user can go and start using this and this trial, uh, this extended preview period is available, like, like I said, at no cost until we uh, announce the price early in 2021 and make it available for purchase. And it includes all the pro capabilities and things like pageant reports, AI. We just announced the ability to do email subscriptions with Power BI reports as full report attachments. So a number of great capabilities are available now to all users. Um, so. I encourage you to get started and leverage this premium per user license to, to, to try out all of the premium capabilities and maybe try all of the pageant reports and the day content for you and your coworkers. Awesome. So does this mean, Chris, then that I can, with this new license, create and publish Power BI paginated reports and share them to others? Yes, as long as they have a premium per user license, they can absolutely consume that content. Um, we've we now have two ways to license premium, either per user or per capacity. So if you're doing it per capacity like you were doing before, nothing's changed. You still have the unlimited distribution rights. With the premium per user, each user needs a license to consume uh, the content in the service. So you, just like you do with Power BI Pro, you'd need to assign that to each user you'd want to author or consume content. All right, well, there you have it. So an abundance of new capabilities and features built in for paginated reports. Uh, we can wrap up with a handful of resources. These are all available on Power BI Docs, uh, but we just draw a calling to your attention that there are some specific articles that will give you more information about what we've just talked about and demoed here. Awesome, yeah, no, great to, great to spend some more time with you, Peter, and chat through some of the exciting updates and look for a lot more as we move throughout 2021. Looking forward to it. All right, well, thank you very much for watching.